Hi, good morning. Welcome to a weekend vlog. Today's Saturday and it's January 13th. Nope, 14th. Yesterday was Friday the 13th. And... Huh? Hold, please. Where are you? Oh, it's funny. Have you been vlogging while I was out? I had to let Kiki in our bedroom window because we're doing our concrete floors in our laundry room today and we can't access our house any other way. So we're crawling in and out of the window like teenagers. It's a weekend vlog. We don't have that many plans. I think we're gonna go to Target today because we're uh, out of like all household goods. We're getting trust by Hannah Diaz right now. I'm finally on the third section of the book, which is where I've heard it gets crazy. It's kind of like a book within a book within a book so far which i wouldn't say is like necessarily my bag but i'm liking it for the most part so far we're following a billionaire rockefeller-esque family of sorts who have a lot of money have a lot of mystique around them and are getting insights into their lives from different viewpoints I'm reading this for my work's very informal book club I'm reading it with two of my co-workers i don't know if you would call that a book club but I am liking it so far. If I hadn't read In the Distance, I don't know if I would be continuing with it because <laughs> I feel like I want to DNF more this year and I don't like it enough to not DNF it, I would say. But according to Jalen, according to all my friends, part three is when it gets crazy. So I'm waiting for that to happen. I am going to finish up some Sunny's orders right now. Get ready. And I think we're going to leave the house. Check in with you later. We did errands. It was an errand day. It's really gloomy out in Yuma today, which is very rare for Arizona. So I'm in my pajamas at 4 p.m. And I think we're gonna watch that new age 24 movie by the Safdie brothers. It's about like the teenage comic. I'll keep you posted. I also wanted to tell you about, um, you probably already know this but I didn't know about it and it was like life-changing. If you have a library card in the United States, there is a service available to you called Canopy, Canopy with a K, and you get f like 10 free streams a month through your library card and they have really good movies, like weird art house stuff, like popular movies, stuff that just got out of theaters. Not sponsored by Canopy, I wish, but if you have a library card, there's a bunch of stuff on there that's not on other streaming platforms and that's where I'm watching this on. I'm trying to be more of a movie guy this year, but we'll see how that goes. I don't know why, it's just always hard for me to watch a movie at home, but I do love going to the movies. Speaking of, I saw Megan and I wish it was like 10 times funnier. <laughs> um, I thought the trailer was funnier than the movie. Trailers are too long nowadays too. Does anyone else think that? Like I had to stop watching the trailer for Bo, which is the new Ari Aster horror movie with Joaquin Phoenix, because I was like, this is telling me way too much. I don't want to know any of this before I see this three hour long horror movie. Okay, um, I'm going to try to convince Kiki to order Indian food. He's voting for Thai, but we haven't had Indian in weeks and weeks and weeks. And we're going to watch this movie. We're going to be cozy. Hey, I finished Trust last night. This is a book, hold on, let me, let me, let me uh, get under my blanket here for you. Uh, this is a book told in four parts. I don't know how much to tell you about this without spoiling it, but truths are revealed. In the latter half, we hear from two female narrators. One is a working college girl. One is the 
woman of the house who's been of much mystery in the book so far and we hear from her kind of diary. I really enjoyed the last two parts of this book. I don't know in general if I like a book that has to have this much build up in order for the payoff to be satisfying. Like I don't know if that's the kind of reading experience I like, right? I, I like immediacy and this book wouldn't have worked if it was immediate. It needed that slow build. So I think that's interesting. And I think that's more rare, I would say. I think Diaz is good at revealing the truths of this book and seeing the different kinds of perspectives that come out of it. It's about money. It's about trust, <laughs> financial privilege and literacy and lots of interesting stock market observations, New York high society in the 20s and 30s, mental illness, health, agency. A lot of interesting juicy things in this book. I'm glad I read it. I think this was a really good book club book and I'm excited to talk to my coworkers about it. And I'm also glad it's over because it was like 400 pages long. That's long for me. I'm like a 200 pager kind of girl. Sunday anyway, I don't know if I told you that, and I am watching my my stories, <laughs> aka the Sunday booktube uploads. Watched some Allison Pages, some Anna Wallace Johnson, uh, a couple of other people. Oh, one thing I wanted to talk to you about is Patreon. So I historically have not been someone who ever subscribes to like any Patreons ever in my life before starting booktube. I've just I don't know if I'm like morally against content behind a paywall. It's not that at all. It's just I never thought to do it. And a lot of my friends have started Patreons for the work that they do, um, including Hannah, um, Jalen, Allison Pages, and most recently Ben Green. And I also subscribe to the Literary Fiction Friction uh, Patreon now, which is like six Patreons. And I think it's cool to. Uh, support people in a monetary way if you like their work they're doing. I would love to know if you guys are Patreon subscribers. I'm not gonna start one. I think Sunny's is like my version of that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but I don't know, something newer in my life and I've liked being able to treat it as like long form content a little bit more and dive into that and support people in a more tangible monthly way. It just feels very much communal communal and like more tangible than whatever this is, whatever YouTube is. <laughs> I've also been considering like turning off my AdSense because I make I make like 70 bucks a month on YouTube and that's not nothing, but after taxes it's it's like more annoying for me to quantify the tax portion of YouTube income than it is to get this money and I think it would free up like editing stuff but maybe that's just me wanting to be Allie from Allison's pages. We're going to do the last two coats actually that's not true we're gonna do two more coats of the colorant for our goddamn laundry room floors today. B meaning keepy and I'm probably gonna go to my mom's house and do laundry all day because our washer and dryer aren't hooked up because of the floors. I'm also considering baking something today. <laughs> and last but not least, a reading update. I started, I'm addicted to my Kindle recently, you guys. I don't know what's going on. Like picking up a physical book right now, I just don't like it. I love to read one-handed scrunched on my side like this. And this is just like the ideal format for that. Last night I picked up Speedboat by Renata. Nada Adler. I think this is kind of like a modern classic person put out by NYRB. It's a little nerd. My hold on the library came through and I'm loving it so far. It was written in the 50s or 60s I think and it feels so modern in tone. It's very fragmentary and we're following a narrator who is a journalist and living in New York City and I really don't know what is gonna happen or where this is going but I think it's a book structured in like three novellas and it's kind of just like disparate musings on daily life and I'm liking that right now instead of like a big chunky piece of fiction where I have to like follow a thread. 
interesting. I'm really liking it. Let me know if you've read Speedboat. I was looking at Goodreads and I didn't see a lot of my friends had read this book, so I'm wondering if it's a little bit under the radar. Man, Spud's going for it. Look at this paw. Okay, um, goodbye. Oh my god, you pour it? Yeah. Oh my god. How's it look? Like buttermilk? <laughs> okay. No comment from Mr. Alberts at this time. What are you doing in here? Um, I'm stealing <laughs> stickers off the books for the truck. Yeah. <laughs> it works. Pretty good thrift haul though for the truck. Ann Patchett, Liz Elizabeth Strout, Colson Whitehead, Rooney, a couple NYRBs, Rachel Kushner, Annie Dillard, uh, Juliet Suka. Jeanette Walls, another NYRB, my shoe. <laughs> and I'm also starting to do a small shelf of kids' books, NYA. Which I don't really know what I'm doing, like sourcing those, but I don't think kids are like super discerning. <laughs> at least that has been my experience at the one pop-up I've done with kids' books. They just are like, yeah, it looks good, and they just pick them up. Um... But I'm picking up a couple of, like, series that I know are popular, so we'll see. For pop-up in January, we sold more than half of our book inventory, so I'm going pedal to the metal thrifting stuff. Happy Monday, it's MLK Day. I just took myself for, I don't like where this highlight is hitting me, but we're gonna roll with it. I just took myself for a coffee and a breakfast at a coffee shop near my house. It was truly the worst cappuccino I've ever had in my life. And maybe the worst avocado toast. <laughs> it's what I get for trying something new here. I feel like if you go to a cafe, which you know is bad, which is, almost every cafe in Yuma except for one. You have to order something gourmand and something sweet. And I did not. I ordered normal things and was sad. <laughs> like you wouldn't order a cappuccino at Starbucks. I mean, maybe you would, but I wouldn't. Anyway, I just finished reading the last essay in The Hard Crowd by Rachel Kushner, which is a collection of essays that I've been reading for like the last two weeks. It's good. It was really good. I think the final summation, it's, it's a collection of essays that cover either cultural musings or like very autobiographical snippets of Rachel Kushner's life, who is an interesting person who grew up in San Francisco around a bunch of weirdo, thorny, hard crowd type of people. She also was involved in like the motorcycle scene, the art scene, so has been on the fringes and deeply embedded within a lot of like subculture communities and the people that make them up. A part of me really liked reading about this and felt some sort of kinship to her, uh, seeing as how my carnival background makes me view the world sometimes and has put me in direct contact with a lot of characters and a lot of those characters are in my own family. So like seeing these portrayals that were loving and not hyper exploitative was interesting to me and then some of it I found really repetitious and boring and I think the last line in the last essay is kind of a summation about the entirety of the book and like her experience growing up in this crowd and she says i'm talking about my own life which not only can't matter to you it might bore you 
So get your own gig. Make your litany as I have just made mine. Keep your tally, mind your dead and your living and you can bore me. Which I think is such a smart call to action at the end of this and a great nod to her self-awareness, I guess I would say. I liked this. I might try to read the Mars Room again. I attempted to read it while I was on vacation once and it just wasn't connecting with me. I'm also a little thorny about depictions of imprisoned people um, in literature. I find it has to be done very well and I don't remember it being done that well but I am willing to try again with a more Rachel Kushner open mind. Yeah, if any of that sounds interesting to you, it's definitely a collection you can dip in and out of. And she also had a good interview on Literary Friction, the podcast. Okay, I don't really know what to do with myself today. It's 11.29. I've already gone to all the thrift stores this week. I don't really feel like cooking. Our house is clean. It's kind of a boring day. <laughs> I have a appointment with uh, Mr. Jalen from the Bar in the Bookcase to record a podcast at three. But besides that, I'm kind of just chilling. I might go home and finish Speedboat. I might watch a movie. Who knows? Only time will tell. Speaking of movies, I watched a documentary with my mom last night. Ooh, fully someone right next to me in the car watching me vlog. That is devastatingly embarrassing but i watched a documentary with my mom last night called stutz which is the jonah hill documentary about his therapist that he did on netflix interesting uh interesting i'm trying to apply some tool frameworks into my day today just for fun this is kind of like a bigger conversation but i'm definitely on my like health, wellness, peace, well-being shit this year and attempting experiments of all kinds to shift my life and shift my perspective. A lot of it I'm kind of keeping close to the chest because again it's experiments but um you know involves yoga, involves crystals, tarot. We're dipping into some metaphysical properties here people because I just want to shift my, my perspective and um, invite curiosity and carve some new neural pathways. So, might talk about that eventually at one point. Maybe not though, because it's all kind of feeling like a sore spot. <laughs> okay, um, I'm going to go home and do something. of the year. This looks like a mediocre one. I was just watching Ben Green's Patreon video and he posted a link to these free Yale courses and there were literature courses and there's one about like intro to literary theory. I think that would be really fun to take. I texted Jalen. I was like, should we do this? <laughs> I'm waiting for him, Jalen, to get home so we can record a podcast together. Mm-hmm. It's not very good. You can tell by the color. It's very pale. Well, that was anticlimactic. <gasps> On Friday, it says USPS. So I don't know if they delivered it to the wrong house or what. Got stolen? I'm sure they just delivered it to the wrong house. You should void it. I didn't have them send a new one. This is my Snuggie, by the way. If you ever see me in this leopard blanket, it's not a blanket, it's a Snuggie. Here she goes to the grocery store for some root vegetables and a cucumber. Bye! 
she's so graceful. <laughs> See you later. Grocery haul! I have a bunch of beets. I have a loaf of sourdough, olives from the olive bar, white cheddar, crackers, sweet potato, a cucumber, lettuce, one honey crisp apple, a lemon, one avocado, and this thumb of ginger, which I stole because I only need just a little of it. I thought it should be free. Quasi meal prepped for the week, AKA roasted one sweet potato and had a beets. I am going to, I don't know what I'm gonna do for the next 30 minutes. Probably look at my phone, honestly, is what I'm gonna do for the next 30 minutes. I'm gonna pick up my mom. We're gonna go to a restorative yoga class, hence the fit. And then I'm gonna go pick up a Chipotle burrito on the way home, eat it, watch Sopranos, see my little book. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. I feel like it was okay. <laughs> Let me know what you're reading. Let me know how your reading's going so far in 2022. Let me know if you're watching any good movies too. Should I watch the menu? Let me know. Okay, I love you all. And see you later.